Welcome to MMA FanCast. I am excited to have first time guest of the show and soon to be member of the uh, Olympic Boxing Trials Qualifying. Um, Leah Lewandowski, welcome to the show. Hi, so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to have you on the show. A big shout out and a special thank you uh, to a teammate that you know, Chris Ioneri, who was on the show last week and gave you a shout out and said, how exciting is it that you're going to be March 20th to 25th? You're going to be out in Detroit, Michigan, um, competing on the Olympic tri trials qualifier, which is 2024 is the Olympics, but you're going to be going there uh, to start the process for boxing. So let's jump in. What got you into boxing? How long ago did you start training? And what put it in your mind that, hey, let's sign up for the Olympic trials? It definitely wasn't a direct route. I mean, you asked me two years ago when I basically first started in the fight game, I wouldn't, I would have laughed at you telling me like I was going to the Olympics and stuff. Um, so I actually got in the fight game uh, in general a little over two years ago. I joined South Jersey Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and day one, I did say that I did want to compete in MMA. Um, I had the patience for it. I knew I had to put the time into it. Um, so along the way, I was doing jiu-jitsu classes and kickboxing. And it was actually my first amateur kickboxing fight where I was on the same car with Chris Ionary, where he introduces me to his old boxing trainer. Um, Chris had brought him in to help him get his hands tight for the fight. And I met Milton Davis um, a couple of weeks before this fight. He was working with me. And even after the fight, he had agreed to continue working with me just to get my hands tight to translate it back to MMA. Um, and so we ended up doing a couple boxing shows. I was meeting the right people. I was doing the right tournaments. And it just so, you know, from A to B ended up where I was doing Olympic trial qualifiers. And, you know, it was perfect timing with the Olympics right around the corner. Um, but I didn't start boxing specifically until I believe like last April. Um, so I did nationals, got ranked. And yeah, now we have a couple Olympic trial qualifier tournaments. And then before you know it, uh, the Olympic trials in December, which I'm trying to aim for. Okay, well, you, you gave us some background, so I appreciate that. And, and you mentioned your coach, Milton Davis. I know you're working a lot with him one-on-one, -on -one, and he doesn't necessarily have a gym right now, so you're affiliated mainly through your coach. And, of course, the way USA Boxing works, at least the way it used to, which I'm sure it still does, you have a little physical passport like they used to give? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or they don't I'm so scared of losing it. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. It's still a physical passport for people yeah. that don't know. I was a USA Boxing certified coach years ago to have some fighters do that and i thought they were kind of kidding when they said an actual passport but it really is they were it's cool because they write in it and it keeps your record it is it is really cool but it's a bit like outdated in the sense that you could do this on a computer but it is it is fun to have a physical uh passport talk a little bit about the way the ranking system so what is this tournament um it's a multiple day tournament how many fights will you be fighting and then you mentioned that really it's December is the big one. So how many regionals or whatever it ends up being? Um, I know a little bit of the terminology for Golden Glove, which is a little different, but still has sort of regional and eventually you build up to national Golden Glove. So kind of break us down how that works. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. It is a little confusing, um, but USA Boxing has nationals every year. And basically to keep your ranking in the United States, you compete, um, everyone in the US competes at nationals. Um, which I just recently did in December, and I'm currently placed at fifth in the nation for my weight class. Um, I did fight at 114 for the nationals, which is not a Olympically recognized weight class. So to compete at the Olympics, it's 110 or 119. So I am dropping down to 110. Um, because the Olympics are right around the corner, they are having five, I believe it's five Olympic trials qualifier tournaments where they are taking the top two finishers of each tournament. And those two people are able to compete in the Olympic trials itself. Okay. And then of course, I believe the winner of the Olympic trials will be the candidate or alternate for the 2024 Paris Olympic games. Um, so the nationals that I just did this past December, they got me ranked number five. Uh, was the first tournament of the five. Uh, but again, because I did not compete at an Olympic weight class, it didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. uh, so this next one that I am doing in Detroit, it's um, technically classified a nationals qualifier. So it's like one of those things that allows you to compete at Olympic weight classes, but it also is an Olympic trials qualifier, which is what we care about the most. 
Um, so I will be competing at the, the second Olympic trials qualifier tournament uh, in Detroit. And then I believe the one after that's in Philly and then Kansas and another one's in Texas, but this will be the second out of five. And you only need, you only need one to count, right? So if you finish mm -hmm. in the top two at 110 pounds next month in Detroit, pretty much a month from now in Detroit, then you'll be locked in to compete at the big one in December. Exactly. Okay. They specifically said if you finish top two in any of these um, trial qualifier tournaments that you are not allowed to compete at any of the other ones to give other people the opportunity to qualify also. Sure. Which also, given the fact that you are going at the second of five, it gives you an option, not that you'll need it, but it gives you an option <laughs> to potentially boomerang if you need and, and catch up another one. Hopefully you won't need that, of course, but I do like how they have it structured. So that way, once once somebody's locked in, they kind of leave the, the option open for other people as well. So that's super exciting. I saw on Facebook that you're raising sponsorship and support. What's it been like uh, representing South Jersey? Um, what's it been like to try to get publicity and, and people excited about sending you? I believe the hometown is Berlin, New Jersey. Yes, that is my hometown. Yep. <laughs> Um, it's been a little difficult. Um, I think it's just because of me because I've been a little lazy with it because I've been so focused in the training and fight camp. Um, I have been doing sponsor reach outs. Um, for right now, I did in terms of sponsors, I did like a one time um, sponsorship for like the back of t shirts. I do actually need to reach out. I'm still trying to figure out the sponsorship process. And um, I've reached out to a couple other teammates at uh, South Jersey Brazilian Jiu Jitsu who do have that experience with sponsors. Um, I was a little late to do that for this upcoming tournament, especially I found out last second that this upcoming tournament will be out of pockets, whereas the nationals before my local boxing committee paid for. But again, that was my fault for being a little lazy on that. Um, but I'm definitely going to work on sponsor reach outs um, after the Detroit tournament for sure. So I'm still figuring it out as I go along. Well, I bring that up more to, to bring attention to it. So if anybody watches this and, you, you. and you're a small business owner or a big business owner and you want to sponsor Leah, I'm sure you can reach out to her and connect with her because that is that is a part of it. And there's a business side to fighting, but you've got to get the fighting side right. And, and, and some people do the business side really well early, and that's great. But you got to get the fighting side right early and all the time. And then the business can add, you can add that through, like you said, people through the gym people that kind of know that process. So um, just because technically I get I get excited to be just, I, I like MMA, obviously that's what we mainly do. And I'm play by play and color commentary for 247 Fighting Championship, mainly color commentary. So I love the intricacies of MMA, but there is something beautiful about just boxing. I also really like Muay Thai and kickboxing because you get the eight, the, the eight limbs, um, but for boxing, do you switch stance a lot? Do you use a lot of jabs, cross uppercuts? What, what, what? Don't give all your techniques away. But what style of boxing do you use? Because boxing's been around since the 1870s, and there's a lot of different techniques and styles. Some people are really locked into only one stance over the other. So, kind of take me your philosophy of boxing. Um, I was, I always thought that you know, there's like a certain thing to always do um, that will work every time. But people, my coaches around me are always reminding me that everyone is different. You need to adjust to every single fighter. Some people will give you this. Other people won't give you that. Um, but the main thing is I am blessed, I guess, for my size and the weight that I fight at. Um, I am on the taller end. Oh, okay. And I fight at a weight class where they're basically like up to here on me. So for the most part, um, it's just utilizing the reach as, as most as I can. Um, I'm working on footwork right now. Again, I'm trying to learn every single style again, just in case um, something doesn't work against one fighter, being heavy footed, being light footed, um, playing the defense, playing all, uh, more on the offensive side. Um, but I just recently just tried to play like the all universal game really. Cause before I thought it was just, you know, I'm tall, keep them out with my reach and that's it. But you know, the further you go along and the more, um, skill that your competitors are you realize that that's not always the case and you always have to keep changing up basically you can't my coach always says you can't be a, a one trick pony i guess you could say <laughs> and that's a that, that's a great mindset from your coach and i think boxing can really you just ran down a bunch of different things there's a lot of different styles within boxing that you might be able to have to use within the same fight you might have to have a really tight shell you might have to really lose flow state it all kind of depends on what's 
going on uh, with, with your opponent and also with you. Are these one minute rounds at one point USA boxing stuff was all one minute rounds or are they two? Like what's the three ones? Three threes. Okay. Three threes. Yep. <laughs> so I guess that's great because I always thought three ones was a bit short, but, but three threes can be a lot. Um, I, I would assume at some point in boxing, there's volume that's necessary. Uh, Floyd Mayweather isn't really a volume guy, at least at his height, he was more of a defense uh, defensive guy, but I, I would expect there's a lot of volume. So you mentioned strength and conditioning. What are you doing to keep that up? Because in any tournament style, you could be great the first round, but you got to be good. Not only the first round, you got to be good the third round and the third fight of the third round. So uh, what do you kind of do? You mentioned you're, you're a tall, lean, lean frame person. Does that kind of work for you as far as your endurance? A hundred percent. Um, what I realized the hard way is at first from going from jujitsu and, and kickboxing into boxing, I realized the hard way, the two different cardios, mm -hmm. you know, with the ground game and like the strength, the core work to that high, sp um, high pace, um, all just straight punches for, you know, three minutes straight. Um, so I had to work on cardio for sure. Cardio was the most important thing. Um, but not even just like long distance cardio, but also like the wind sprints for those like short bursts of air for your second, third, fourth, fifth wind. Um, as for strength, I do have to keep it light. Like I try not to, you know, of course, um, like add muscle, um, but any kind of like body weight training um, is essential into like the daily, the daily um, activities, I guess. Sure. Yeah, that goes a long way because you have to maintain what, what weight class you have to be at and, and all of that. But I think it is, it's the same way with wrestling, jujitsu, it's a different cardio. Boxing is a different cardio. Running up mountains would be a different cardio. Cardio is different depending on, you know, biking. And cardio is different depending on what, what you're actually doing. So when people say, oh, this cardio is always better than everything else cardio, it's not, it's all sports specific. You know, you obviously we're talking about the Olympics, but rowing, rowing cardio is, you're sitting on your rear end. So some people look at it and be like, well, how much cardio does that take? I mean, rowing cardio is a completely different thing from wrestling. Wrestling is hard in obviously, and so is any physical sport, but cardio is different depending on what your output has to be. Um, I, being around track for as long as I have as a, as a college track coach, um, you know, we, we always joke between the long distance runners who are running 10,000 uh uh, kilometers the 10k 26 laps versus the the guys that run 100 meters right they're both tired at the end but one ran 6.6 .6 miles one ran 100 meters cardio is different depending on what sport you're trying to do what have you enjoyed the most and what are you looking forward to the most at, kind of as you're pushing to the next level in boxing i guess um what the most exciting right now is i guess the unexpected because again it's such a high pace in terms of like everything that's changing in my life. Um, again, I just started boxing like this past summer and uh, my coach uh, Milton was telling me like back when we were hitting pads in his basement, he was telling me that, you know, I was not even just like questioning if he's like, you know, as statements, he's like, when you go to nationals, you'll get ranked. When you go to the Olympics, like, you know, smooth sailing and then you go pro. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, you know, whatever. But then again, here we are. Um, so I guess for the future, it's just a matter of um, like how, we can actually execute this, you know, I mean, we've gotten this far in such a short amount of time. So it's just super exciting to actually um, see it like fall right into play exactly how we had planned it like this past summer when we first started. So I guess I'm just really lucky in that aspect. It is great. It's great that you have a coach and also that you're willing to put the effort in to follow the plan. A plan isn't helpful if you never take the steps to follow through with the plan, you know, so it, it's great that you're willing to do that. Um, this is just a dumb question because I happen to be from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So grew up watching the, the Rocky movies with my favorite Uncle John. Hats off to Uncle John. Um, but do, have you ever watched those movies before? Did you ever kind of get the sense because South Jersey is just out the other side of Philly. It's kind of a Philly area in a way. So was there any part of you? Do you ever think of the Rocky theme song when you're training or I'm just curious because it's, it's such a Philly area thing to be connected to Rocky. How many times have you run the Rocky steps with the statue? I'm just curious. Cause that's like a big deal for people that don't know Philly is obsessed with Rocky. Honestly. I mean, 
I don't like to say like I am, I feel like Rocky. I mean, I used to actually live in Philly, I think for like about five years. I, I went to Drexel. I lived on campus wow. while I was there. I lived in Fishtown. I just moved back to Jersey just because all my training's here. Otherwise I would still be in Philly. Back when I was at Drexel, um, we would go on runs and basically exactly that. We would run to the art museum. We'd go, honestly, I wasn't good at cardio back then. So by the time I got to the art museum, I'd walk up the steps because you know, I'm not gonna, well, I'm not gonna do that. But that was also a time when I wasn't um, fighting yet. But even then when I wasn't um, fighting or training at that point, um, I was still like, just like in my mind, like picturing like the glory of like, you know, Rocky Balbo and stuff. Um, even at my gym in South Jersey, like um, some of the coaches would be joking around calling me like the female Rocky. So, you know, I'll shrug it off, but you know, like deep down, like I, I take it personally and you know, it's just like a good feeling. <laughs> It is. It's a great feeling. And I, I cheated. I ran up the Rocky stairs, but because I drove really close, parked, and then I had all the energy to run up the stairs. So you probably did it more traditionally by running over to it in order to run up the stairs. But that is that is super, that is just super exciting and fun. So in your mind, what are you looking to prove or show? Obviously, you need to finish in the top two. Um, how many, how many women is this an eight? um tournament like what what's the tournament structure for this because th that'll depend on how many fights you have to have and all of that i believe it's like about 16 eligible uh spots to sign up for in general however there's not that many female boxers especially yeah. at the weight class that i fight at they're mostly around like the 120s to 140 uh pound marker um so it's the same setup for the past nationals that i did in december um, I remember I was looking at the different divisions and one of the elite male divisions, I think it was like the 150s or 160s, of course, had like 16 to 18 people. So they had more people even than like the minimum um, requirement, which means so the fights are from the 20th to the 25th, which is Monday through Saturday, Saturday being the championship day. Um, and I was looking at some of these brackets and some of the guys who had, you know, full brackets had to fight every single day. So that's six fights once a day. Um, for me, I only had three fights or I would have had three fights for the last one. And I think there were like maybe 11 girls, but the way that they divided it. However, for the one for Detroit, last time that I looked, there was only five of us, including me. Mm -hmm. So one person gets by on to the next round. And then, you know, I have two or three fights and that's it so far. And registration ends um, in about a week. So, yeah, there's not that many girls that are signing up for this. Well, they, well, yeah, yeah, that, it's great for you. You know, I've, yeah, I've don't often, read the player, you know, like, the yeah. game. <laughs> hey, I've often, I've often said it when I was running Pursuit MMA, a gym out of my church in Norristown, Pennsylvania years ago, I always said, I, I love training female fighters because the opportunities are a bit more because there's not as many or heavyweight guys because heavyweight guys doors open as well. You get up over the 240, 250 range. There's only so many guys that can that can maintain that and also not get knocked out. So those are the two things I've always said. Either people like you that, that are females that are at the lighter weight class, that have opportunities. You still have to put the work in. It's just there's opportunities. In, in male MMA, 155 to about 185 is just filled. UFC is the same way. All the regional promotions are the same way. You get under 55 as a guy things start to loosen up. There's not, you know, there's not as much competition and you get over 205 into heavyweight. There's not as much. So it's really cool that your weight's working out. So I'm, I'm happy for you that, that, that it is a great opportunity for you. Still, still a lot to do and accomplish. Um, who's going with you to, to Michigan. I'm sh obviously coach Milton is anybody else making the drive to be in, in your fan club. I, it could be a long week, obviously. So what's the plan for that? I found a couple people from uh, South Jersey Brazilian Jiu Jitsu say they were going to come. I told them they don't have to because, again, I might only have like two or three fights, and you know, what, maybe I get there and more people drop out, um, and I won't be able to see them the whole time because you know I get to get into the fight game. And because whereas other fights like MMA fights, um, it's just a single fight, so you might weigh in the a single time the day before or the morning of hours before the fight. So the downside to this is that I have to hold my weight the entire time because we weigh in every day that we fight, like in the morning. So, if, you know, so I, I'm going to be, you know, in a very like tense mood, I guess, like that entire week. Uh, but my parents actually are trying to make the trip for this one. They were bummed that they couldn't make the other uh, nationals event that I did um, in this past December because they had work. 
um, but they are trying to uh, come to this one with me. So I think it's just going to be my parents and um, my coach, unless, you know, a couple of friends decide they want to come too. But well, I think you know, I told be- them they don't have to, because again, like I'd feel real bad. Like if, you know, I don't really, like I purposely try not to talk to them the whole time, but it is what it is. Well, that'll be exciting. And uh, there's a, there's a mental game to everything. Staying on weight is a mental game and also staying focused because it is a tournament that can be tough. You mentioned how, MMA or it used to be tournament, but the way MMA is done now, you can kind of get all your energy out, have a fight. Everybody's excited and, you know, you're kind of good. Whereas in any tournament, um, I've gone to a lot of wrestling tournaments, Waynesburg University, a little D3 college I used to work at. They, they're good in wrestling. They just had somebody today qualify for uh, national. So, but it's the same thing. You go to a tournament, even the top ranked guys are tense the whole time because they're constantly wrestling. And BJJ tournaments are the same way. Boxing is the same way because you have to, you have to kind of keep that intensity throughout the week. Um, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I hope to follow up with you. So reach out to me after the, uh, the Detroit show. I'd love to have you back on and kind of talk about the journey. It's not every day I get to hopefully follow somebody to the Olympics. So this is really exciting to be able to start the process now. So thanks for coming on and talking about USA boxing, which I think is very important. It's a little strange, you know, in the MMA world, we're not quite as used to all the rules. And of course, the, uh, we already talked about uh, the passport, but all kind of the, the, the way it levels up in USA boxing is a bit different than in amateur MMA. So I appreciate you kind of educating the masses. Thanks so much for coming on. And I can't wait to see what happens for your next best skills out there at the qualifier in Detroit. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I'd love to see you again soon. It'll be great. You've been listening to Luke Payson for MMA Fancast with Leah Lewandowski. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you.